The SAO journey for Kirito Nasuna is over, or is it? So what's up guys, Foxen here. Final episode, SAO Lessization, War of Underworld, episode 23. Anyone else getting that sinking, empty feeling? But don't you worry, SAO will return. So smash the like in honor for this final SAO episode, and ring the bell so YouTube actually sends you future SAO videos. This episode titled New World. Turns out Alice has gone missing, dun dun dun. This actually shouldn't be too much of a surprise. Alice pretty much made herself a number one target with that announcement. Right now there's so many groups that want to get their grimy hands on Alice. So let's go. Poor delivery dude. The guy must have been like, oh it's just the first loony of the day. Just sign this so I could go. A nice little package from Wrath. Renko must have forgotten, she's such a busy lady. Oh my god, it's actually a waifu in a box. Freaking loved Kirito's reaction. So, when did Amazon start selling these? I'm asking for a friend. By the way, was Alice naked? I guess technically she's not really since she's a robot. And from the previous video, I've seen still so many confused about Alice in real life. Hopefully this scene hammers down Alice having a shiny booty. The anime actually skipped out on some fun details of Alice screwing up the duct tape job. Thankfully, the delivery person fixed the taping. Anyway, time to charge a best blonde girl. So, Alice, why did you mail yourself? It turns out Alice wanted a piece of Kirito in real life. The anime didn't mention it, but Rinko would have gladly allowed the visit. The only problem? Alice would have gotten escorted with some tight security. So getting into the real heart of the matter, Alice is pissed off. Oh no, Kirito, you screwed up big time. Alice is about to go Terminator on your wet ass. Can you really blame Alice? Unfortunately, you really start to unwind the horrible situation for Alice. So far, Alice has just been paraded around in this metal shell. If you think about it, in the underworld, all the people she loved are dead. Selka is a block of ice. And that's not even getting into the crap that Quinella did to her. To this, I really like the real answer that Kirito gave. He doesn't know. I mean, how could he? But one thing is for certain, Alice has come into being, and with that she'll bring some change into the world. Whether that's going to be good or bad, to be determined. Now for what I didn't like. Step away from the blonde, Kirito. You know, you can comfort a girl without actually embracing them. Besides, you really don't want to give Alice the wrong idea. I mean, you're already one of the few lifelines she has in this world. Then, for the super ginky Alice, I really love how she cheered up so quickly at the thought of scouting around. She really is a fish out of water here. For a small anime cut, Alice was actually asked to turn on her GPS tracker. The Find Your Waifu app is back online. Getting into the dojo, fun to see Alice doing her night pose. Probably originated from Japanese customs. I miss Alice versus one meat bag. Come on Kirito, still with that SAO stance? And for Alice, the high Norkia style. Come on Alice, I know you're still angry. This is really just a clever excuse to give Kirito an ass whooping. But damn, they broke those twigs. Alice, you're about to be paying for those. Which by the way, they didn't break in the light novel. And my god, A1 Pictures sure love to tease Alice a ton. I really can't say I'm a fan of this, especially since it just puts fans against one another. For a moment here, Alice was like, I'm gonna keep on moving forward. I see Alice has downloaded the new Eren update patch. Kirito, run. At least Alice seems to be back to her usual self. Anyway, later that night, Kirito's celebration dinner for exiting the hospital. I like seeing Alice and Leafa chatter about. These two have actually become close friends in Alphen Online, bonding over Kendo. As for Kirito's papa, why so serious? He definitely didn't look pleased. I'm glad to see them addressing just how sick and worried they've been. On the flip side, you do have to give Kirito some slack. I mean, it's not like the guy asked to be assaulted, injected, kidnapped, forced into an isekai, and then potatoed in that isekai world. And that's not even getting into the 200 year time skip. Let's leave that part out. So back into reality, Kirito time to go back to being a normal kid. You gotta study your ass off and go to the uni. Oh, you changed your mind, have you? Kirito's papa really gives a stern Japanese doctor vibe. Alright, so getting into progression for Kirito, you're really seeing how the underworld experience has affected him so much. Looks like no more trip with Asuna to the US. Oh yes, yeah, so you have Kirito setting down the foundation to working at Wrath. Kirito has always wanted to see where the next stage of VR is heading. He has no intention of drifting away from the underworld. Overall, Kirito felt he found a theme he could actually make his life's work. By the way, up until this point, Kirito only revealed this change of heart to Asuna. As for Alice giving that father line, even Leafa was super shocked. At least props to Alice for trying to help Kirito's case. Oh, we totally know it. Isn't that right, Black Swordsman? Come on, keep on going with that parent embarrassment treatment. Kirito's parents had read the full record of the SAO incident book. 
Time to keep on living without regrets. And I totally saw the enemy cutting this a mile away, a little joke by Kirito. He warned his parents to sell any stock they had in a certain defense contractor, if they had any. Getting to nighttime, Ellis was actually sleeping with Leifa. Ooh, let the Yuri begin. Unfortunately, you had an anime Kirito cut here. Kirito thought he was actually a pretty fortunate kid. How many worlds did he have the great opportunity to experience? He had so many memories from them. They were all like a precious gem that his soul could barely contain. Either way, it looks like Alice had a plan for a night raid. What is that, like the second shock Kirito got from this blonde? His body is just naturally rejecting her. At least the blushing from Alice was a nice touch. Which, by the way, Kirito, haven't you already seen her full package? Don't worry, Alice, he's seen better. And small prediction here, this nighttime Alice will get a figure later on. So getting into that mysterious message. Oh my god, the anime actually cut it out. Kirito and Alice actually spent a good amount of time trying to decipher the message themselves. But more important, they cut the Alice line. This should have been where Alice recalled Kirito calling her Baka 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 eight times. Alice claimed that was the first time in her life she truly argued with someone with their entire being. Anyway, time for Yui to wake up. I know some of you wanted to see this interaction between the two, but Alice had actually already met Yui and Alfin online. Talking about their interaction, Kirito here thought about the two different AI. Both of them interacting so natural seemed like an impossible miracle. Getting to the secret message and IP address. It's a fun little easter egg, you could actually go visit this yourself. You'll be greeted with a fun little SAO treat. Let me just put it out there since the anime cut it out. It should have been Kayaba that provided this connection for them to get back into the underworld. And again with more Alice teases. Especially with her not being too happy at the mention of Asuna. I think I wanted to hurl. Come on, out of all the things the anime cut out, you couldn't skip over this crap? Getting to Wrath, the Roppongi office. The anime didn't mention it, but they still don't have a way to take Yui into the underworld. As for a positive anime improvement, I left Asuna here mentioning rebooting Selga. They completely snapped away Alice acting all defensive and catty towards Kirito. If they had kept that in, I think I would have seen my McDonald's breakfast again. So getting back into the underworld, time limit 5 hours. There shouldn't have been too many changes in 200 years. Right. Looks like SEO beat the Fast and the Furious into space. So a quick mention right here. I know there's been so many questions about what the hell took place here. I did do a quick video going over what we do know about the 200 year underworld time skip. And I know YouTube is not sending this out to you. So definitely check it out after for the details. So you got Asuna going back into goddess mode. Or should that be Star Queen? It looks like Hirito got the blue rose sword back after Tisei passed away. And Alice back in her golden armor. Complete with two dragon eggs. Oh yes, breakfast time. But really, at least one of them could be for Alice, and the other one, you could go ahead and give to Selka. Alright, so let me introduce you to Tisei and Ronia's descendant, Cecia and Laura. There are no more Integrity Knights, now they're Integrity Pilots in space. Which, by the way, did they keep the same voice actors? It sounded like it. Inside their spaceships, you can see the Star King symbol. You got the two swords, and the flowers linked to Yuju and Alice. Where's Asuna? You got the space pilots fighting this mystical space beast known as the Abyss Horror. It really reminded me of whatever the hell D cooked up during the war. Really, this whole scene was just a final send-off to them. Kirito displaying his final Getsuga Night Sky Blade. Goddess Asuna just had to leave Kirito in the dust, summoning a comet. And finally, Alice finishing off the scraps. Yeah, so much has happened in those 200 years. The underworld is now in space. Laura and Stesia did recognize them. There is actually a portrait of Alice on the 50th floor of the tower. And then for Kirito and Asuna, they felt like they knew them in their hearts. Their souls knew who they were. The Star King and Star Queen who disappeared had returned. This would start a new age for the Underworld. And great to see Yujo back for a second. SAOlicization Season 3 is done. What did you think? How much did you love SAO Season 3 overall? It really has been a long but fun two year ride. Honestly, it was pretty tough waking up at 2 or 3 in the morning to work on these videos, but I think it was worth it. This SAO finale definitely was cry time for me, as were a lot of the episodes in War of the Underworld Part 2. I could already tell I would have gotten that massive empty feeling here at the end, but thankfully the SAO progressive anime has been announced. Oh yes, there's going to be more SAO for the coming few years. For the end picture here, combined with the Raona's opening, you can see the comparison to the SAO light novel version. Slight change with the usual in blue now. Just seeing this, I kind of do wish young Alice showed up for a scene post her death. So yes, all the stories have been told. Kirito, Asuna, and the others will return. For something they're calling the Inter-Intelligence War. Which is teasing stuff in SAO Unitor Ring. Whether that gets turned into an anime, only the stars know. Getting into Discount Iron Man at the bottom. So the enemy didn't fully show this scene, but do know that Kayaba managed to escape. 
Then for the light cube of Star King Kirito. Wonder what's going on with him and his minion Higa. Final scene, Kirito will return. When I first saw this, I thought it was obvious what this was teasing. Unfortunately, this is not teasing Unito Ring or SAO Season 4. This actually got changed from the SAO Light Novel picture, which is very likely instead giving a nod to the SAO Progressive anime. Talking about the SAO Progressive anime, let me add to my earlier video. The SAO Progressive anime is only this soft reboot or fleshing out the Aincrad arc floor by floor which would technically be SAO from the start up until episode 3, so that's how much of a gap they're going to be filling in. Potentially more if Reki releases more books. Anything that comes afterwards, including Alpha and Online, GGO, The Underworld, all of that still happens, that is still going to be canon. As far as we know, SAO Progressive will only go up until floor 75. I've also seen this spread around, that oh, the SAO Progressive anime will make everyone love SAO, including the SAO haters. And to be honest, I highly doubt that. Putting aside all the hate and misinformation campaigns that were spread for SAO, one of the things that was clear was how much everyone loved the idea of a death game and being trapped within it. From this, SAO watchers already constructed this image of what they wanted to see in their head. SAO Progressive will be that for some people. But for anyone looking for this edgy anime where people are constantly dying left and right, I'll just say that you won't be getting that. At least not from the first six floors. Then for SAO Unitoring, I know some of you are asking why SAO Progressive and not SAO Unitoring? It's actually pretty simple. SAO Unitoring only has three light novels out. I've actually already started reading Unitoring whenever I have a little bit of free time. Without getting into the gritty details, just know that pretty much nothing major has happened. Most of it has just been set up for the initial Unitoring story. If you are coming out of SEO Season 3 expecting to see anything like War of the Underworld, you're going to be massively disappointed. No joke. A lot of the characters got massively nerfed. Kirito actually spends the majority of the first book running around in his undies. But getting back on topic, will an SAO Unito Ring anime happen? You know the SAO Progressive anime will be next. After that, if SAO keeps on making money, it'll happen in a few years. Which means keep on buying SAO figures, the SAO light novels, the SAO games, and other SAO merch. Keep on screaming how much you love SAO, support it. Going forward, I do have a few more SAO videos planned, maybe like 10. I really would like to keep on doing weekly SAO videos. Unfortunately, I know SAO interest will drop now that Season 3 is done. But as long as you keep watching, I will keep on making videos. Definitely check back to the channel. YouTube is really terrible with sending videos out to you. I do have a big video on SAO of Season 3 overall coming. Honestly, that should be like 2 or 3 separate videos, but I'm combining it into this X large beast. It'll include the good and the bad. So come back in a few days. Besides SAO, I will be covering Attack on Titan Season 4, and the other big Isekai, ReZero Season 2. And in general, I will be covering Isekai anime and seasonal anime. Definitely anything SAO news related that is juicy. Let me also give a special thanks to you watching. It's been a long two years. I honestly didn't expect or had any idea that my SAO videos would get this much love and attention. It really has been a pleasant surprise, especially as a huge SAO fan. I don't think I've ever mentioned this in a video yet, but one of the huge reasons why I even moved to Japan was due to SAO. SAO was not the reason I initially started to learn Japanese, but since then it has become a huge motivating factor. I really truly wanted to understand the SAO anime. I don't know when it happened, but the goal came and went. Right now my next SAO goal is actually understanding the SAO Japanese light novels without too much help. I'm sure that'll come too, just like it did for the anime. So here's to more SAO and more juicy SAO videos from me. Smash that like if you love SAO as much as I do. Do check out Bookwalker to see what SAO Season 3 skipped or the Moon Cradle arc. Be sure to use my code FOXEN to get a sweet $5 discount. But anyway, bonus. Who was your top favorite character from SAO Season 3? Extra points that the anime actually improved on them. Be sure to subscribe, I know a lot of you aren't. Like you, Billy. Go ahead and watch my non-spoiler review on another Journey's End, this time for Violet. And I'll see you guys later.